Hello there, everyone. Welcome to this Veil Sun webcast. Really appreciate all of you joining us for this conversation here today. We're going to be going about 45 minutes to an hour. I uh, want to make sure that we get you all sorts of good information, including you see that big number five, those five tips to ensure a lean and safe job site. That's our overarching idea. I'm going to give you a little more of an agenda here in a little bit, but uh, glad to be with all of you here for this conversation. I want to introduce our two folks from Vale Sun that are on board for this conversation. The CEO of Vale Sun is here, Rich Crum. Glad to have him on board. Also, here is James Cosman. He is the chief solution architect. Both founders of Veil vale Sun. 10 years in business, more than 17 years uh, out there, though, consulting and building apps for the construction industry. Uh, we are going to get into these concepts, this idea of uh, lean process uh, uh, automation. We will define that for you all in a little bit. Uh, they are an elite QuickBase solution provider. We're going to be talking about the QuickBase platform uh, and really how Veilsun is helping customers out there, especially in that construction space, uh, really to utilize the power of that platform and hear what Veilsun brings on top of that. Uh, Rich, with that, uh, again, the third bullet here, right? World's leading construction companies really uh, leverage you all, and that's where you work and spend a lot of time. Give us an idea of some of those types of projects and really your experience in that space. Thanks, James. Yeah, really, really excited to be here. Great. Uh, the team is excited to be here and be able to talk some about some of these solutions we've had for our clients. And yeah, we could probably roll into the roll into the next slide, but um, we're going to talk about different areas where our team has leveraged uh, these technologies, these low code technologies, specifically QuickBase. Um, data centers that run the internet uh, have that there. So we have data centers all over the world that we've applied QuickBase technology and tracking to in order to help those construction projects. Skipping over you know, to power, to backbone, to fiber optics. Um, we led a big project with the world's, um, South Africa's largest uh, fiber optic network. Um, over here, we got charging stations. We got big buildings. I'm really proud to be part of one of the new concourses of Boston Logan Airport, we drive by that and uh, you can in this technology that we're going to look at today supported that construction project. So we're very, very proud of that. Um, we apply QuickBase to sustainable solutions such as solar uh, power company sales, delivery, all those things that have anything to do with, uh, you know, alternate technologies and QuickBase is found in factories that power power of this stuff. So building of those factories as well. So really proud that, you know, we're a part of so many of these clients projects that that support on an ongoing basis, these, these major endeavors. Major endeavors, complex endeavors. And that's something that we were going to get into talking about, right? The complexity uh, that so many of these teams have faced and how you help them deal with all of that. What I want to do, folks, is give you an idea, a little agenda here of where we're going to go for the remaining time. We will talk about really what is lean construction planning. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely play into quick base and what it is, how it supports. Uh, again, uh, as I mentioned, what Vail Sun lays over the top there to really move these projects forward, move Move them forward in a cost efficient way, move them forward in a safe manner. Uh, we've got some storytelling that we're going to be sharing with you as well. And then really, we'll probably take a good amount of time on these five tips. Not only will we tell you what the tips are, but we'll be able to jump back and forth between a couple of demos, really show you some things there. So a little show and tell as well. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, Rich, what and how we will get to. I'm a big fan of whys and really kind of setting that up for. Uh, so this idea of planning and safety and why does the construction industry need to be modernized? and adopting some newer processes give us kind of that why answer so here's some statistics that show why the technology is is you know the rubber's meeting the road here so 25 percent of our projects come within budget that means 75 percent don't right so there's a lot of waste so there's a lot of over budget there's a lot of cost overruns going on down here under safety you know 21 percent of uh workplace deaths happen in construction so obviously that's a big concern for all our clients is a big liability obviously we want to keep everybody safe at the work site and safety comes really hand in hand with with scheduling and planning as well so those those really go together 
Um, 35% of the time is said to be non-productive. So we want people to be productive, right? It's a very low margin business. So we need people to be, you know, working as, as, as efficiently as possible. And then, you know, the trade partners are even telling us, you know, talking about how really how things are scheduled out for them are pretty, can be pretty inefficient and cause some problems for them and slowdowns and cost overruns as well. So really the data really lines up with what we're doing today. One of the things that happens across industries, and I know it's the same in the construction industry, is that when uh, an organization within an industry is changing and growing and evolving and modernizing, a lot of the changes that we focus on, okay, there's new technology that we have to deal with. Uh, there's some processes that have to change, but there's also the people. And that's what I want to kind of focus on a little bit in terms of the mindset, right? There has to be a change in mindset. And that brings us to really defining this idea and this concept of lean construction. So define that mindset and what that means for organizations. Absolutely. And we can spend, we could spend a lot of time on this, but we want to do a little bit of a brief overview for those that might not have been exposed to lean construction. Lean really came in with Six Sigma lean practices that really made its entree into the manufacturing industry. Mm -hmm. It's now within construction. There's a lot of initiatives, especially amongst large GCs, to go down this road of lean and to make sure that things are kind of working efficiently. So some of the main tenants are really to just kind of reduce waste and increase value, really, is looking at those things where things can be more efficient related to cost and time. Um, it really comes down to why does work sit waiting for people and why are people sitting waiting for work? You know, it's like, what, what is it? How do we meet? How do we have the folks be working on the things they need to at the right time in the right place, right? So that's really the core problem. So lean construction really focuses on that collaboration and that planning process and the handoffs so specifically what we're going to talk about is pull planning, pull planning in that area. And it's an ever-changing, it's an ever-changing, it is an um, item. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a mindset for that our construction partners are having around that, you know, like we we need to look at things more efficiently. Mindsets are often things that folks can say, okay, I get the process, I get it. Um, but after you get that idea, it's then the bigger question is, well, how? And how do we start uh, addressing this? And how do we start adopting this mindset and all that? So we've talked the why, we've talked the what, the how now, how do we go about becoming lean? So specifically what we can focus on is pull planning here. So there's different, there's different aspects of lean construction, but this is probably the focus area, big, biggest focus area is pull planning. And pull planning has classically been a manual process. You can see in the picture here with sticky notes on a board and basically bringing in all the stakeholders into the same room that can look each other in the eye and decide what comes first, what can happen the same day. And it's called pull because you're pulling backwards from a milestone. So take that milestone and work our way backwards so we can determine what those touch points are and squeeze the schedule together to make it as efficiently as possible, yet make sure that everybody is on the same page about who's doing what when. Being on the same page is obviously very important. Uh, we, we see these beautiful sticky notes up there. That was efficient back in the day, but doesn't seem, uh, Rich, to be the most efficient way to get business done, especially complex business these days, correct? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a, it's a little more manual intensive, especially the post work um, that has to be done after these sessions. So it's not as quite as efficient as it can be. All right, Rich, so there's got to be a better way. So what is that better way? What we use is we use a low code, no code platform. And so we're kind of getting in the weeds a little bit here, but it's it's worth worth noting that technologies have really met us where we need to be to do to do these kinds of things. This, you know, these processes have been done over a hundred years of you know construction. Now we've got the technology that's easy to easy to build, fast to build, and we can create some templates. But basically in QuickBase, it is a you know it is a drag and drop tool. It's it's a low code no code platform where we can quickly build. And so we built the product that we're going to talk about today on on this. And it's just it's just worth noting that it, it just it's quick and it's flexible and it can move can move very fast. Um, there's no, not a lot of time. 
especially in construction industry, margins are again low and people don't have a lot of time. So this is this is a way to meet that need as well. I had mentioned folks in the beginning here that we wanted to share some stories as well. And that's where we're going to mix James into the conversation now to start off with a little story tell. We can tell you all day long kind of what the promise is, but we want to uh, share kind of uh, what things look like. And again, how QuickBase and everything that uh, the team at Valesun brings to the table can really help propel your organization forward. So, so James, give us an example here of what things look like in the real world. Sure, thanks. And I'll I'll give you a real example of a large general contractor we 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 worked with. And 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 they were a company that actually had embraced the lean, right? But they were having inefficiencies through all the stages of their of their schedule to what actually happened boots on the ground. And we were able to leverage QuickBase and QLean, which we'll show you later today, to help solve this problem. So um, as you guys know, those of you in construction, uh, really simplify the process. You guys have a master schedule that, that you're typically starting with, and, and this company was no different, right? And they would take that master schedule once the project started and break that down into, you know, short-term planning milestones that they were, that they were um, going to do with their trade partners. And then they moved into production scheduling, so managing what happens day in and day out on a job site and how those shifts occur and, and, and all that. But they were running into major inefficiencies in this process. So they had enterprise systems like Procore and P6 and Microsoft Project to manage the master schedule part of the, of the process. And oftentimes when they're going into planning meetings with uh, short-term planning meetings with their trade partners, they were bringing a printout of the schedule um, or they just didn't even reference the master schedule at all. And they were either not doing any planning around it or they were doing it on a whiteboard, kind of like the picture that um, we had shown on a previous slide. They were doing poll plans on whiteboards or they were using um, software to help in this, this planning process. The problem was, was once that process was done, that data got thrown away or it got stuck on a whiteboard and you had trade partners taking pictures of the whiteboard, trying to remain on what the schedule was, realize what the schedule was, schedules constantly shifting, nobody was aligned. So this created a lot of waste and not a very lean process where People are passing paper around, they're making phone calls, they're trying to get everybody up to date on the schedule via email, they're passing around spreadsheets. And the end result was the trade partner was confused. The trade partner didn't know where they were supposed to be at at any given point in time. And those people on the general contractors team, schedulers were also confused about what was happening in the field on a daily basis. So. This was a barrage of phone calls, emails, um, paper conversations, and at each step of the stage, this was loss of money, this was loss of time, this was creating safety risk because nobody was aligned with what was supposed to happen at any given point. So, um, but they felt that this was a problem that, that was, was typical and might not be solvable. But with technologies like QuickBase, um, for example, and, and, and our tool on QuickBase called, called QLean, we were able to streamline this process. So we were able to take um, information and data that was coming from Procore and P6 about projects, teams, master schedule, bring that into a single flow in QuickBase and QLean that um, allowed them to do their short-term planning, allowed them to build a schedule push those schedules into the field on a mobile weekly work plan app, and then even actually help drive some of their safety planning as, as part of it. Rich, I want to get your, your thoughts here for a second, because as I, I saw the previous slide, and as James was talking, there was a lot of chaos. A lot of people kind of didn't know what was going on. But something I keyed in on that James said was also there were a lot of people in the industry just kind of seemed to accept that. that that's just kind of how it is. That's how we do things. That's just how it is. And it's probably not going to change much. Was that mentality, one, is that mentality still 
something that you find across the construction industry? And two, was it something that was uh, prohibiting maybe new young talent from coming in? Was it getting older talent saying, you know what, I'm tired of all this chaos, I'm out and, and maybe losing some brain drain? Yeah, it's really, it's really, um, uh, you know, scheduling and planning aside, it's, it's also about retention, right? Having the, having the right folks in the field and as, as the workforce has changed, is changing, you know, in this, in this particular field, it, it becomes even more important to provide information. That's what people, you know, that's what they're, that's what we're used to. And that's what they demand to be able to run things is, is a phone, not a, not a tab, you know, not a piece of paper. So I think that's, that's a big part of it. And it's just also, Again, the technology is is matching matching the moment. Really, it's all kind of coming together at the same time. Folks, we want to come back to uh, the big number five that you saw on our title slide, and that was referencing five tips that we want to share with all of you. And so what we're going to do here is James is going to run through those tips. So what you'll see, you'll see the tip, we'll kind of explain to give an idea, and then we'll show it. So we'll be bouncing back and forth and giving you kind of a little demo here as well. So uh, James, with that, let me get you back in here. And these are really operational decision-making tips. I want to set that out there as well so people get an idea of kind of where we're coming at, uh, what these tips are all about. So with that, five of them coming down the line. James, let's start with the first one. All right, thanks. And I think the, the first tip is more of a mindset, mind shift change than, than anything. But I promise I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you some more nitty gritty. So um, most construction companies have what we like to call an enterprise software gap. So we have all of the enterprise level software, most have CRMs, finance software, date, maybe large data warehouses that are storing, that are storing all of their data, they have some sort of construction project management system, maybe an ERP out there, right? But there's this big gap. There's a bunch of stuff that just happens day in and day out on a job site, in the office, that none of these systems really cover. And the thing that most construction companies we found that are, are filling these with is spreadsheets. But there's a real problem with spreadsheets. You can't collaborate. There's no workflow that you can build within spreadsheets. You can't share data, or it's very difficult to share data from a spreadsheet into like, let's say your construction project management system. Um, so you start to create these data silos and misalignments between the team working in the field and those back at the home office or, or even in the trailer. So QuickBase fills this gap really quickly and powerfully because now you have a system that you can put in the middle of these to help run processes and really connect them into, into what you're doing. So I'm gonna show you a quick example of of, of that, that maybe might help bring this point home a little bit. So most, most construction companies that we find use Procore as an example, um, and, and using it to manage anything from project teams, project schedules, RFI, submittals, you know, pretty much the whole gamut. And in Procore, and I'm just gonna give you this, this simple example, um, Procore connects really well with, with QuickBase and, Q, and our software QLean on QuickBase. So in this simple example that I want to bring out, you know, a big th part of tracking a project is just knowing who is on the project. So in a, in a large scale project, you may have hundreds of, of people on this project team um, in Procore. And this is really good information to get out into the field in real time so that you can start a planning process. So moving into QLean here, um, you can bring that data real time into, into QLean. So if you remember that, that project I show you is called Vail Sun Tower, right? So we can have um, the project in Procore actually create the project within the QLean tool. And then as soon as that happens, you're able to see um, who the internal team members are on it, so who at your company are in it, and also all of the trade partners um, that are also involved in that project right in the directory right there. And this, 
this this seems small, but it's going to become really important um, as I start to kind of talk about our next tip. So this brings us into pro tip number two, which is leverage lean planning in your QuickBase applications. So um, you saw in the previous step that that I brought all the team members in from Procore. Um, you can also bring in the master schedule from Procore and or P6, and you can start to break down that schedule um, using lean planning methodology within the tool itself based on what your actual team members are in your large enterprise systems and what your actual master schedule is. So I'm going to show you a quick example of this. Okay, I'm back here in QLean and if you recall, this was the team that we had set up. But you can also bring in your major construction milestones. So I brought in these milestones that are maybe finished floor floor three um, from Procore. So let me take a minute to walk you through this poll planning board. And for those of you that aren't familiar with with poll planning, I'm not going to do a deep training on how this is done, but I'll just I'll, I'll try to give you a little bit of the gist. So. This poll planning board is completely digital, so it allows you and your team members to collaborate from anywhere. You can be in the same trailer together. You guys could be in different countries if you want to, and you see how each of the team, team members collaborating on the poll plan board. And the first step of the poll plan process is really for all of your trade partners that are going to be part of, of planning process to Get all of their tasks up there, their cards, as we like to say, up on the board that they have to do to meet the milestone. So this is really the trade partner telling everything that they have to do to finish floor three, right? And they're doing this a little bit in a vacuum, although people are, are often collaborating and having lots of conversations about what are the different things that have to be done. And... Um, the, the, the pull plan board supports a, a variety of different cards. You know, the simplest is, is a task and you're putting in days and people and you're putting in um, what they promise to do and what they need from other people to get done. So this gets at the whole lean planning concept of really defining what you're going to do, but what you need from somebody else to be able to to get that done. And once everybody has their cards up here, this is where the real fun starts in poll planning, which is we're going to look at this milestone, finish floor three, and we're going to start to work backwards from, um, we're going to pull backwards, as they say, um, to get a whole chain of what needs to occur to meet this milestone. So the, the last activity might be, you know, fire tape and caulking. And then another trade partner, and you can see this in real time, realizes that their card has to go before that. And so you can start to drag your cards around and work backwards from what your end goal is, is to front to to the front to actually meet the milestone. And a lot of this is built off of the lean manufacturing kind of mindset and also military backwards planning. But it's really become pervasive to plan to plan small sprints towards milestones in this in this sort of way. But doing this digitally versus doing it on a whiteboard also provides a lot of other um, benefits um, that you can't get directly off of just doing this on a whiteboard. Like you can start to think of how we tie cards together so you can create dependencies between cards. You can start to think about um, different types of dependencies, like do these need to start at the same time or finish at the same time, right? But this is really how you start to build out your ordering of events before you're even thinking about how many days um, each of these tasks are going to take and weather or anything like that. You're just kind of getting an ordering in place um, to meet that. And this is where a lot of the collaboration between the trade partner and the general contractor occur. This is where a lot of the promises are made and um, where everybody really gets aligned to meet this. And then this, the, the third part that is done in each poll plan is you start to now start to think about schedule. 
And the pull plan board supports this by, I can start to think of what's the first thing I've got to do. And you start to work forwards um, from there. So I can say, you know, day one, when we start this milestone, this is the first activity that's going to have to be created and, or, or be done. And then day two, um, day, and then we can do these activities together on the same day. So you start to build out with your trade partners a, a schedule with them being a collaborative part of the process versus the old school way of just pushing a schedule to trade partner. Um, verbal agreement studies show are much more are, are followed much more than paper agreements. And this is part of that philosophy because everybody's looked each other in the in, in the eye and decided that this is the schedule that we agreed to and everybody feels a part of it. So with this, um, but we can't stop the process here. We need to start stop, we need to think past the poll and creating this initial schedule to actually what starts, what what actually happens on the job site once the work starts. So with that, I'm going to transition to our next pro tip. Hey, James, I'm going to jump on in here for a second. And, and Rich, want to get your uh, insights here because, uh, again, keying in on something James said was this is in real time now. It's not just done siloed and then going back and telling some other partner, this is what you're doing here and what have you. What impact have you seen that have on teams that have started implementing and working this way? What do they say? How do they react? How do they feel? Well, it's, it, it's really exciting and powerful because the teams can be on the board at the same time, but be looking at different parts of the board and be working together collaboratively uh, um, at the same time. So this is all happening real time. These cards can, multiple cards can be moving around at the same time. Um, you now, obviously there's an order to these, to these sessions and, uh, but sometimes there's different, different parts, parts of the dependencies and the, and the ordering that's being done together so that's that's a that can't be missed here this is all happening at, at, at one time there's no passing around of a spreadsheet <laughs> this is this is happening at once and very efficient and have the last two to three years that we've all lived through uh the idea of remote collaboration all that has that really helped spark some more adoption as you have conversations with teams about hey this is a new way and people aren't saying are you sure it would work they kind of get it now yeah, there, there's definitely been some paradigm changes because of COVID, um, you know, traditional construction companies where everybody felt like they needed to be in the same place to do these things or to work together. Um, uh, you know, they realized the ability to work remotely and QuickBase really kind of creates that promise across all kinds of applications and use cases, but especially here, um, most of these, most of these uh, sessions now using the poll plan board, people are not in the same place. They're in, they're in different parts you know, different parts of the city or wherever they might be. All right, James, we've gone through the first two tips. First one was thinking of QuickBase as the gap filler out there between all those enterprise systems and software applications that we utilize. The second tip there, leverage lean pull planning in your QuickBase applications. Let's move on to the third tip. So our next tip is think past the pull plan. Think about how this can flow right from lean planning to your production schedule, because you're not going to you're not going to manage or be able to get a broad view of a very complex project just on a whiteboard. So um, so the QLean software actually lets you take what you did in poll plans and other activities that maybe you didn't do a poll against and manage the project almost like a command central. So I'm going to I'm going to transition now and, and show you a little bit about how that works. This is a, a a screen or a view that should look very familiar for for you project managers out there, right? It's 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 a it's a Gantt chart, but the way that the philosophy behind QLean is that once you do pull plans and if you're pulling against pieces of your master schedule then you can take those poll plans and actually use it to build out your master schedule in more detail, right? So what I'm seeing here is, is how the overall project looks. And we've done different poll plans on level one to get to level two. You just saw me get a start on the level three poll plan. And this could start to kind of break down your master schedule into smaller pieces. So 
once you get this all lined up, you can actually see how your um, tasks and what you're pulling against, how that lines up against what you actually promised in your master schedule. And this allows you to do things um, like, like you would manage in real time, like you can shift tasks out, you can create new tasks, I can, I can create different types of dependencies between the tasks. I can start to, to view things um, smaller and bigger and broader. I can do really complex um, types of things around constraints and critical path management. And a lot of the stuff that you are used to seeing in project management software, except this is on the web and everybody on your team can see and be informed of how things are shifting in real time. This can even be configured in settings where if I'm a if I'm a project manager, we have a weather day, it shifts out something, um, shifts out something a day, but it then um then it then shifts everything out after that. And you can even set up workflows that then inform your trade partners downstream that that shift has occurred and tell them their new schedule. Um, or one of the benefits of QLing is it's so flexible is you don't have to have it work like that. It doesn't have to inform them. You could try to pull things back in different ways to make up the time. So um, with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really start to kind of talk about how this can then get deployed into the field with our next tip. So getting into our next tip, pro tip number four, is to really make the boots on the ground part of the process. Um, it's something that we see um, over the years in a lot of construction companies is they take a real push approach to working with trade partners. They're doing things like pushing schedules down to them without collaborating with them. Um, and then and, and and they're not really making them part of the process. Therefore, it kind of creates this contentious relationship between general contractor and trade partner and a non-collaborative type of process. And therefore it becomes harder to get information back from the trade partners themselves that, that you need to properly manage your schedule. So luckily in, in, in QLean, we've built a whole mobile experience around bringing the trade partners into not just being part of the pull plan process, but also being part of what is happening on the job site on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to give you a little bit of taste of how that works and how it benefits also um, somebody managing the project. So this is a look at the QLean mobile app, and this is really built around um, providing trade partners everything that they are supposed to do on a daily basis. And these could be activities that um, they promised on a pull plan. It could be something that was just put on the entire uh, on the production schedule for them to do, but it deploys it for them so that they could get in and see what 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 is it what everything is that they that they need to do on a weekly basis, and it allows them to also give you real time information back from this mobile app. So if I have some activities that are due um, this week. I can in real time come into my mobile app and, and inform a superintendent that I'm on track. Or I might say, hey, I'm delayed on this other activity, and here's some of the reasons why I, I'm delayed on it. And here's some, here's, and I need this many additional days to get this complete, right? And this doesn't necessarily change the schedule, but it lets the, the superintendent or the project manager know that there is a problem so that they can go and address it and then maybe adjust the, the schedule according to this. But by bringing in the trade partner into each part of this process, both in the poll plan and in here, um, we've our experience has been um, this, this glass ceiling that trade partners will never comply or use technology. It seems to start to fade away as long as they're being brought into the brought into the process. And we've seen some really good use cases and stories of really the trade partner and the general contractor coming together in a lean collaborative environment using some of these tools. So with that, I'm going to transition to our our 
our final tip. So our final tip is integrate safety into every part of the process. Oftentimes we hear people talk about lean planning, scheduling, project management in a very different breath than they talk about safety. But really safety should be integrated into every aspect, the planning process, the, um, uh, the scheduling process, how you plan and daily huddles at the beginning of each day. And by integrating these two, you can really have powerful results, both in reducing safety incidents and also um, responding when there is a safety incident. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of example of how that can be done using QLean. So what we're seeing now is a, is, is a safety dashboard that can be part of QLean. And these safety and, and this safety application is tracking anything from incidents that occur each month, maybe injuries that occur, some of the, the causal factors that are causing injuries on job sites so you can get out in front of them. And it's also tracking on-site observation. So even something that a trade partner on the mobile app sees or a superintendent and routing those incidents to um, or observations to the correct person based on their severity. So it really helps you get out in front of safety issues that could occur. But I really want to focus in on how planning um, can really play into the safety management process. So there's this concept of a pre-task plan, and these are often done in daily huddles where um, everybody's getting together and they are thinking about um, what are the tasks that I have to do today and what are the safety conditions um, and, and that I have to be aware of and also to comply to. So with QLean, what you can do is take some of those tasks from the planning process, and actually it's very customizable where you can start to have some of those tasks that are occurring on this day actually drive what questions are, are you're requiring your trade partners to answer um, about the activity that they're doing today. So if we know that there's a task that involves a crane, right, we can have the system ask questions to them before they start work that ask them, you know, do, do they have a, is a person operating have a crane certification? Is there a spotter involved? Um, you know, are they following these SOPs from our company in, in, in driving that or in operating that crane? So you can really bring in, like, if you have everything in one system, you can really bring into the process what your plan is and actually customize how your safety program works around a plan on a given basis. And we've seen some really good use case of this really helping people um, avoid near misses, you know, avoiding possible catastrophe. So, um, so just to reiterate, it's just very important. Um, and that's our pro tip to think about this every step of the way and QLean does this on several different levels. Hey, James, really do appreciate you going through those tips for all of us here. Uh, folks, in just a moment, I want to give you some contact information. We hope everything we've talked about so far, these tips, uh, real life example, hopefully that resonated with you. We gave you some whys and hows early on. But Rich, what I want to do here is kind of summarize uh, things a little bit, a couple key takeaway points, and we'll get into some contact information, how we can further the conversation. Absolutely. So just to so just to sum just to sum it up. Um, QLean and QuickBase and these solutions can be used as what we call gap fillers. You don't have to necessarily replace Procore or P6 or anything else, but we, you know, QLean, for instance, it can go from the P6, you know, contractual milestones clear to boots on the ground. So it fills in all those, all those quote gaps for MS project or spreadsheets or a myriad of other technology hits. And those gaps can be other places as well within, within the infrastructure. Um, really a good place to start is combining, you know, your, your project planning and lean planning safety together. They really are 
you know, that's one thing we learned through this process over the years is these really go hand in hand together and really should be. Um, and our team is, you know, we've got a very competent team, very experienced team. Um, we've just got done with a national rollout of a safety application for a major top 10 general contractor. Um, nothing, nothing but good things to say about my team. We're very flexible. We, we adjust, you know, the technology is needed to meet the process. And that's, that's really the great thing of where we're at. Let's give some contact information to y'all folks so you can reach out and uh, work with and engage with that team and continue the conversation here. You've got the phone number out there, 855-702-1976, sales at veilsun.com, and of course, the veilsun.com website and a dream session. We can use that QR code to sign up, but uh, give me uh, what this dream session, uh, next planning kind of steps are, Rich. Yeah, so the, these dream sessions are really fun. We started doing these a few years ago, and it's a really way to come to the table and just kind of talk about where, you know, where you'd like to go. Where do you find the gaps that you have? Where's your pain? I mean, these could be therapy sessions, honestly, about maybe some of the frustrations and things you're hitting. And believe it or not, that you're not the only person probably having those dreams or frustrations. So these are really good, powerful ways to get our teams together and, and you know, no obligation. Talk talk about it and, and spin it around and see what happens. And and Rich, are, are are there some good business titles that you like seeing at the table during these dream sessions? Yeah, I mean, it really is anybody. I mean, there's there's different, you know, different sets of the organization that might be hitting different things. It could be superintendents, it could be, you know, supervisors, it could be, you know, C level. It's like where where are these challenges and where would you like to see if the technology fits? And it's really kind of all over the board, James. And James, before we go, I, I want to take one last moment to, to ask you something that popped in my mind a bit earlier, but it was kind of like the aha moment. Once you've engaged with the team and you've been able to start showing them, really utilizing again their situation to say, here's a modern approach, here's a new way. What type of feedback comes to you in terms of like aha moments or their eyes all of a sudden showing that light going off behind and saying, wow, this could be game changing for us. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you asked. And I feel like we have aha moments um, almost weekly. It's part of why we love what we do. Um, there, there's one that really sticks out to me. And this was a a, a, a different general contractor. And, and they were just kind of getting into the quick base world. And we we worked with them on queuing and really just it was very simple scope up front, just getting getting a poll plan board in place, right? And for them to use it internally. And and, and they started to use it and they, they started to um, get their trade partners in on the board. And the trade partners were like, this is good. And the first aha moment was like, oh, we can actually get subcontractors to use software, right? Like every, nobody thought that that was possible and, and magically it was. But then they started to really kind of see how to lean, and and other quick base apps how we could take that and start to become the main tool for gathering information in the field and also pushing information in the field and by by the time they were done and you know they were pulling information from procore pulling information from p6 getting that on a mobile app so their trade partners could be doing it doing all of their daily huddles on it and they were just amazed that they could get trade partners and their internal team collaborating like this on actual technology, not paper. And it created this whole basis for them to have all sorts of data insights they never thought that they could have. They could tell when projects were, were looked like they were, they were just even steering a little bit towards over past the due date or, or or, or start to see when a trade partner maybe wasn't performing well that they needed to switch out. And it was, it was, it was a really amazing experience working with them and seeing that happen. James, appreciate it. Rich, appreciate it, folks. If you want your own aha moment, the phone number, the email address, the URL, all on the screen. You've had plenty of time to hit that QR code with your phone as well. So with that, we'll wrap up, let you run on with your days. Really appreciate y'all taking time to join us on behalf of the entire Vail Sun team. Thank you for being here, and we do look forward to talking to you all down the road.